Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about filtered statistics. Filtered statistics can help with cardinality estimation. Let's take a look. To follow this example along with me, you need the SQL test tool. If you don't have the SQL test tool, you can go to the website sqltest.org and click on download. There you will see the link to install SQL test. Once you have the SQL test tool, you can go to File, Open Online Examples. There you will find the example SQL test filtered statistics estimation. You click OK to open this example. In this example, we create two tables. The tab 72 has three columns, C1 integer, primary key, C2 integer, C3 character 2000. And we have an index on column C2, IX underscore C2. We fill in 20,000 rows. The value for C1 goes from 1 until 20,000. The value for C2 after we create the table is 1 for 19,900 rows and is 2 for 100 rows. And we create tab 73. This table has two rows. Column value 1, open. Column value 2, closed. It has two columns. Column 1, integer and column 2, character 20. To create the table, you click on Workload for tab and start current. This will create these tables. Now let's go to settings and comments. Let's copy these statements into our Management Studio window. There let's see what is in our table tab 72. When you execute, you see the column value C1 is increasing. Column value C2 will be 1 for 19,900 rows when I execute this group by statement and it is 2 for under rows. Now when you execute this query where C2 equal to 1 and when you have the execution plan on, SQL Server will do a clustered index scan because it finds out 19,900 rows will qualify. If you go to the select statement and look at the estimated number of rows, it finds out 19,900 rows might qualify and it is better to do a clustered index scan instead of using the index that we created on column C2, that IX underscore C2 index. But if you change the C2 value to 2 and execute the query, now you see SQL Server estimates under rows and it uses the index. It does an index seek and a lookup. When you execute with one, you look at the cost of the query for a table scan. It is 3.72824. And when you execute with two, it does an index lookup and the cost is 0 0.3. 25 for under lookups the cost is 0 0.325 what we are going to do is join the table 72 and 73 before that let's look at the table 73 there are two rows in the table one means open two means closed table 73 is like a lookup table so we can use this lookup table in the query and make a join so what i am doing here joining table 2 with table 3, 73, and joining T2.C2, that is the column C2, with C1 of tab 73, and supplying a predicate tab 73.C2 is closed. So when I execute the query, you see there are under rows. Ideally, SQL Server should do a index lookup. But if you go to the execution plan, there you see SQL Server does a clustered index scan. The reason is if you move your cursor on the select statement, there you see estimate a number of rows is 10,000. Why did it estimate 10,000 and not 100? Because during the optimization time, SQL does not know the value of C2, whether it will be 1 or 2. This will be visible only while it is executing the query. So SQL found out the table has 20,000 rows and there are two possibilities, one or two. Since it does not know what will be the value during optimization time, it estimated half of the rows will qualify. That is the estimation 10,000. And if you look at the subtree cost, this is the uh, cost of this uh, clustered index scan included. On the other hand, 
if you execute the same join with open, the total amount of rows, 19,900. But if you go to the execution plan there, you see the estimation is again 10,000 because SQL doesn't know at optimization time whether there will be one or two for column C2. So it does a clustered index scan. Of course, clustered index scan is better in this case, but the estimation is incorrect. Instead of 19,900 rows, it estimates only 10,000 rows. Let's execute one more query, which includes an order by. So when I execute this query with order by, you will see SQL Server does a sort because it does order by and the sort spills because it estimates 10,000 rows instead of 19,900 rows. And if you move in the select statement, there you see memory grant is 26 megabyte, 26.9 megabyte. SQL Server estimated memory based on 10,000 rows and not 19,900 rows. This leads to sort spilling to TimDB. Let's execute this query from SQL test tool. I am going to execute this query without the join, which is in workload one 10 times. I'm going to do a start current. There you see the average execution time is 132 milliseconds. If you want to see the time in milliseconds, you can click on tools, average DB time in milliseconds. So you see that time is 132 milliseconds. Let's click start current. The time is 100 milliseconds, 130 milliseconds, about 130 milliseconds. Now what I'm going to do is change C2 equal to 2. Let's see how long it takes, 1.4 milliseconds, 1.3 milliseconds. So it is quite fast, 1.3 milliseconds. Now what we are going to do is in workload 2, we are going to execute the join with open to see how long this takes. When we are in workload one and we have one, we know this is taking around 106 milliseconds, 130 milliseconds. When you go to workload two and when you execute, this is very similar because it is also doing table scan and the execution time is very similar. Now I am going to workload three and here I have closed. If you have the index seek from this execution, you will see it should take about one millisecond. But in this case, it is taking longer because it is doing a table scan to execute this query. It is not taking one millisecond. This is where the filtered statistics helps. With filtered statistics, SQL Server can estimate better. Now let's go to our Management Studio window and let's execute the query that creates the filtered statistics. Create statistics, a statistics name on tab 73, that is the smaller table on column C1, where C2 equal to closed. Let's execute this query before creating the filtered statistics to look at the estimation. If you look at the estimation, you see it is 10,000. Let's create the filtered statistics. After you create the statistics, SQL Server will not invalidate the plans. When you update the statistics, SQL Server could invalidate the plans. But when you create a statistics, it will not invalidate plans. So we have to execute DBCC free proc cache. Now let's execute this query and let's look at the execution plan. You look here, the estimation is 100. So the filtered statistics helped SQL Server estimate better. And SQL Server in this case uses an index seek and a key lookup. Now let's go back and execute this query. When you execute this query, the filtered statistics we created for closed doesn't help because here the predicate is C2 equal to open. And there you see the estimated number of rows is still 10,000. And if you execute this query, it will still spill to disk because the estimated amount of rows is less than the actual and the amount of memory allocated is also less. What we will do is we will create the uh, statistics. Before creating the statistics, I want to show you one thing. We will execute this query using the tool. We will go to workload two and we will execute the query to see how long it takes. 
we have an order by that order by spills to disk so the execution time is around 235 milliseconds now we are going to create the filtered statistics this time uh, we have a different name for the statistics but in the where clause we say c2 equal to open we execute and then as i told you if you come back here and I execute the execution time will not change because the plan is cached creating statistics will not invalidate the plans so we do a dbcc free proc cache and then when you execute this query you see it is no more 200 it's quite fast it's 123 milliseconds 22 milliseconds in this case and if you go and execute this query here you will find out sql server estimates now 19,900 rows which is the amount of rows we have let's make a summary filtered statistics are especially useful when you are joining dimension table with fact table i have implemented filtered statistics at my customers and this led to query executing in parallel leading to huge performance gain now you might ask how many statistics can i create is there a maximum limit you know we are creating a statistics for open and one for close what if you have combinations then you might have to create many many statistics on your dimension table so let's go to microsoft documentation there you see maximum capacity specification statistics on non-indexed column 30,000. these statistics don't take up a lot of space in your database because statistics take about eight kilobytes and creating them will be quite fast because normally dimension tables are small thanks for listening if you have comments or suggestions send the email bye